Hi, this is a short video just uh, showing the effect of upsampling on a pure sine wave. And I just wanted to show that just because a, um, a waveform might look quite jaggedy when you zoom straight into it, it doesn't mean that you're going to get uh, distortion when you play that back. So for this sample, I'm going to generate a short section of sound. I'm going to generate a pure tone at uh, 16 kilohertz. And uh, my project rate here is set to 44.1 kilohertz in audacity so when I say OK I'm going to get a section of audio in this track 44.1 kilohertz sample rate and 5 seconds of 16 kilohertz sound if I just duplicate that track so that's control D on my keyboard or I could have edit to duplicate up here on the menu you can see I've now got two copies and I'm going to zoom in so that's the control button and the mouse wheel to zoom in on this waveform and you can see because I was sampling 44,000 times per second but my audio wave here was 16 kilohertz it does look a little bit jaggedy but because I know that the only information present in a 44.1 kilohertz sampled signal is uh, below 22 kilohertz I can actually resample that and reconstruct a much more accurate waveform than you might imagine just looking at this straight line interpolation between each sample point. So if you see all these little dots, each dot is a sample point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the tracks menu and I'm going to choose to resample. And I'm going to choose to resample this second copy of the signal at 192,000 samples per second. So that's going to put an extra well, for every one sample I've got currently, I'll have four. But it's not just going to put extra sample points along the straight lines. It's going to interpolate, given that it knows that the input signal only has information up to 22 kilohertz. So let's say resample. And you can see that it does manage to construct a much smoother sine wave than you might have expected just looking at the original Jaggedy waveform. So now I've got uh, the 192 kilohertz sample to track. I'm going to duplicate that again, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to resample it down this time. So uh, tracks, resample. Let's take that down to 48 kilohertz. It's kind of an interesting shape. I guess there must be a relationship between the 16 kilohertz sample frequency that I generated and 48 kilohertz sample rate. But it's quite a regular kind of sawtoothy waveform there. So that's interesting. We've got that selected. Let's uh, analyze and plot the spectrum. And again, we see there's a, a single peak and it's telling me it's, well, pretty close to 16 kilohertz. And I'm going to duplicate that track now. And I'm going to resample again. So I'm, this time I'm down sampling from 48 kilohertz down to 44 again. So tracks resample and I'm going to choose 44 kilohertz and I think it is interesting that I've gone from an original waveform generated at 44.1 kilohertz but it could have been recorded up sampled to 192 and that shows that uh, mathematically we've still got all the information we need to make a very smooth waveform then down sampled from 192 kilohertz to 48 kilohertz Get this kind of very regular sawtooth and then down sampling from 48 kilohertz 44.1 kilohertz and you get what is very close if not identical to the original waveform that we generated at 44.1 kilohertz so with that up sample down sample down sample no distortion introduced as a result of those resampling um, operations and that's because there was never any information to throw away the signal was below uh, the Nyquist frequency so the Nyquist frequency for the original 44.1 kilohertz um, sampling is half the sample rate so half the sample rate would be around 22 kilohertz our generated wave was 16 kilohertz so there was never anything to throw away when we upsampled or downsampled and that's why Mathematically, we were always going to get a perfect reproduction of uh, the signal that we started with.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, delete the uh, the up sample track and delete the track that was then down sampled to 48 kilohertz. And so I'm just left with the original generated track and the track that was up sampled, then down sampled, then down sampled back to where we started at 44.1 kilohertz. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this uh, the final product from what we started with and by subtracting from the original anything that's left over is just the distortion that's been introduced in the resampling process so to do that I'm going to come up and I'm going to invert the original track so select the two tracks make sure they're both selected and control shift M and here you can now see the difference track and uh, if I just click to zoom in Let's have a look and see what noise we've got after all those um, resamplings and well I can't see any. So let me know if that's interesting or if I could explain it more clearly and uh, thanks for your time.